Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. The Minister of Interior, Olubimi Tunji Ojo, has ordered an investigation into bribery, bribery claims within the Nigerian Correctional Service after Bobriski alleged that his prison sentence was served in a private apartment through arranged deals. Human rights lawyer Femi Falano denied claims by Bobriski that he and his son, Files, were involved in securing a pardon for 10 million naira fee, issuing a 24-hour ultimatum to social media influencer Very Darkman to retract the statements or face illegal action. The investigation led by the Ministry of Interior's Permanent Secretary, Dr. Magdalene Ajani, aims to thoroughly examine the allegations and ensure accountability within the Nigerian Correctional Service. Joining us to discuss this are Dr. Martin Morgan, he's a public affairs analyst, and Evan Sufeli, he's a constitutional lawyer. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So, Evans, I'll start with you because you are a lawyer and I'm sure you have an idea of how things work um, in the law enforcement and correctional facilities that we have in Nigeria. With the whole Bob Risky's case, um, we've heard reports that he served his term, um, you know, I think it was like a six months. He served it in a private apartment. He had to pay about 15 million naira. A lot has been unveiled. But what do you think about our correctional centers right now, especially with the level of corruption? where you can pay a fee for a pardon or you can pay and then you serve in somewhere that is conducive for you instead of going to the prisons. How has this happened so far and your take on this story? Well, it's not just the correctional center that they seek now. Mm. Uh, the entire gamut of the criminal justice system put together. The criminal justice system includes from arrests, to arraignment, mm. to prosecution, to sentence, to jail term, okay, and to release. So you see that three significant institutions are involved. Mm. The law enforcement agency as an institution, yeah. the courts as an institution, and the prison uh, as an institution, or the correctional center. Mm. Okay, so these three institutions are sick, seriously sick. If, if there's no irregularities in prosecution through the police or the law enforcement agencies, you will find irregularity in the courts. Mm. If there's none there, you will find in the prison. So the entire criminal justice system is affected. Now to the prison, please our focus on based on your question. Yes. The Nigerian system made the prison that way because you know, ordinarily, if you go to penitentiaries abroad, prisons abroad, you see that there is no VIP section. Everybody is kept under the same condition. Right. But in the Nigerian state, our prisons are so badly run that inmates who are in custody, it is where they urinate that they sleep. It is where they defecate that they, 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 they eat. Mm. Okay? When the sewage system gets filled up, Inmates will take buckets and go into the soccer way to bail out feces. Oh my goodness. That is the living condition. That is the living condition in our prisons. I go to prisons almost every week because I have a lot of um, clients in detention. And I can tell you for free that the life and the condition there is terrible. Now we're talking about Bob Risky today. It could have been any other person. Okay, I'm not justifying the fact that we should have VIP session. But I'm saying this society, the government contributed to why you have that. Mm. The condition of living is degrading and it's such that if you are coming with some level of opulence or some level of uh, privilege, you cannot, it's difficult to cohabit in the same place. Now, this prison warders knowing this now have turned it to a money making machine. Mm. Wherein if you go into the prison, you now have a section where you have VIP and all that. And it is not surprising that that have been, they, they made an extension of it outside the prison. Mm. That extension was necessitated by the breakdown of law and order. Where it is in the prisons, and this is not to also justify that fact, everyone is supposed to place under the same correction facility. Um, the essence of uh, correction is to rehabilitate the inmates, is to 
I have mean, the image after prison term so that such a person can be reintegrated into civil society. But what our prisons have turned out to be is that not only are they not well fed or properly fed, even though the federal government budget so much money, we were told by the federal government not too long ago that the meal of an inmate costs about 14,000 naira, which has been increased recently. Okay, a meal, you understand. Now, what you have there is a far cry, okay, to what is happening, the condition and facilities. So as long as we are not able to, to give uh, inmates decent life, because they are still citizens, okay? They have committed an offense and you have found them guilty or they are waiting trial, whatsoever it is. They are still citizens, but many of them are waiting trial have not been convicted. Even if they are convicted, they are still a citizen. You don't treat them in a humanizing condition. They have a right under the law until they serve their prison term and they are out of the place. So um, if we keep the condition that way, you are going to continue to have VIP session. And very soon, very soon, maybe all the people who are privileged, who, who, will call, who will commit an offense or who is uh, uh, sentenced to go serve jail term, maybe as well walking on the streets, because that place is not habitable, by any standard of human living. So why do we still have why do we still have that? Like why is the government not doing anything to ensure that it's conducive for people to live in? The government budgets a lot, releases a lot of money. But mm. the prison warders, the controller general and his cohorts are mm. the ones that should be held responsible. Mm. If the government is not releasing enough money, they should come out and tell us that the government has failed to fund the prisons. Mm. The Minister for Interior must, you know, as a matter of fact, carry out prison reforms. It's very important. Mm. If, the, if the living condition and the standard is not improved upon, there must be VIP. It, will, it is a natural propensity. I mean, we've seen a case where a, 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 an inmate in the uh, Kirikiri Maximum Prison built a, a chapel, okay, in the place. Facilities that that's supposed to be built by the federal government are being handled by individuals, inmates who are in prison, who are privileged. Mm. They are the ones supplying water. They are the ones supplying sanitary uh, uh, conditions and materials. Then NGOs uh, and uh, you know where many Nigerians, public spirited Nigerians, are the ones supplying these materials. Yet we are spending money and budgeting money every year for that ministry hmm. and the funds are being released because almost like your current okay so all these funds are the federal government true to that issue where is the money who is the one you know where is the audit report for the past five years and where are the infrastructures in the prison that is where the problem is so if that problem is not addressed you know, people will resort to self-help. It is self-help that makes people to go pay money to others to be kept in, 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 in VIP sessions in the prison. And now it has extended outside the prison. We are complaining then that this is not right, that everyone is supposed to be placed under the same condition because it is, it is prison. Mm. But now we now know that not just that uh, there's VIP session, but there are VIP sessions outside the prison facility. Yeah. Which, I mean, we have to look at it broadly. It is an opportunity for us to address not just the Bob Risky case, but to address the condition of our corrections, correctional centers. I, I totally agree with you um, in addressing the conditions of our correctional center. And that's why I'm going to come to you, Dr. Martin, because and now from what we have heard or from reports, a lot of money um, is being funded into the correctional centers, into our prisons, and uh, um, it's, it's not being used for the purpose. How can we ensure or what can the government do right now to, to eradicate the level of corruption? Because, of course, it's corruption. They, they, if the prisons are correctional centers for people, it should be conducive. And that way, we don't have to have the VIP center or the one that if just anybody can come and stay. Is because of corruption, that's why we've been able to separate this. And of course, now it seems like some people are, are more than the others. What can we do or what can the government do 
into probing this. I know that, um, you know, some people have been suspended. According to the reports that we've gotten lately, some of the officers have been suspended from the correctional centers. But that's just one thing, and that's just sweeping it under the carpet at the moment because we Nigerians were used to having the what's in the news, and after a few days, two, three days, it's been swept under the carpet. But are we going to see proper investigation being done into this and the probing of corrupt activities with our correctional centers? Well, uh, thank you, uh, 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 Mr. Evans. I think, uh, in fact, he painted a very gory state of the situation you find yeah. behind, the, behind the walls of the country. And uh, he tells you that uh, we keep on spending a lot of billions and trillions. Even if you look at the Nigerian budget for this year, a lot of provisions were made in the renewal hope for the prisons, for those behind the walls. But unfortunately, like uh, he painted it out, we have a synchronized corrupt system whereby it's being practiced and cutting what we call demand creation, and I keep on using that word, and through which some of the prison officials enrich themselves. I have cause to visit some of the prisons in my work with the UN in terms of other agencies. I have been able to understand that the objective on paper, you want to correct the abnormality this person has done. But like he said, he's still a citizen and still has some fundamental human right to also preserve. He deserves a decent living despite all conditions. But we are not having it. The question we keep asking is how do we correct them? Like you said, fine. I am telling you the case of Bob Risky was just an opener for everybody to understand. There are more of the Bob Risky cases and currently still going on in the correctional services including their feeding, including whatever they are having, which is not given to them. And the place is so congested. In a prison of about where 20 people, you see more than 500 people scrapped inside like sardines. No ventilation, there's head hazard, skin diseases, and most of them even die in the process on a daily basis. What do we do now? The question there is that we need a total have to rule on all the, it's not only the correctional service. There's a systemic uh, uh, endemic that we are not being able to handle because every person wants to make it for themselves. This tomorrow, the civil service and the civil servant who are really in charge of a particular implementation of service in this country are not being able to hold because they are only thinking from their stomach of what comes there. And I, I am very sure, like you said, what do we do? Do we suspend all the DCCs? That is the question we keep on asking. But the minister, what he did with the press statement, the press statement we had, whether some officials are being suspended from a, a Lagos, Bazimon, Minimum a, a Facility Center, Kujay, and Afiko. For me, that means this system has been there in existence, and they were aware. They were just open for a Bob Risky to open the lid. Mm. And this is what you are seeing. This is what happened. I think that's just the only thing. Like uh, my brother Ophelia has mentioned, by, uh, Ophelia, he, he has told you that we have not been able to get, because even the food we budget, how many million do we budget? I think about, uh, is it 26 or 100 for me? I'll tell you the facts. You discover that most of the ends in the pocket or the waters if there's a war like that waters mm -hmm. the officials mm -hmm. the, the, the officials if most of them are feeding their families there so with that type of situation they created another avenue like a guest house they bring you in there in the morning the evening they release some of them and they go to their businesses and have wow. whatever and they come early morning and assign somebody to escort them just like what, what we have seen in the in the press release Hmm. So what, what do we do? It's to change the whole thing from the head down. And it's not only the, uh, the correctional services. Like you are lying, every fragment of this country has been corrupted. It's just like what you are having in the former Russia, according to Nikolai Gogol, the, the government inspector, if you remember that work. He's hmm. telling you that the whole fabric is rotting. Hmm. Not only that, the whole fabric is rotting. So we need to just have a decisive decision and say, fine, this is how we do. Some of these press releases are just like jamboree. 
for people to forget yeah. what is the real of mm -hmm. this happening. That's the way I look. Strictly my views, but this is my own understanding. Because if they release this official release, how do they just come release them? Where they all part in the same facility where uh, Bob Brisk, I don't know how to use pronoun, whether he or him or he or she, I don't even know which one <laughs> so has been involved. You can use day to be safe. <laughs> all the prison services in this country needs to be overhauled. Yes, yes. I, I share your like sentiment. He said, like he said, the the uh, uh, the legal system involved all those elements he mentioned. Mm -hmm. The from the arrest, the uh, the police before they hand over the judge and the rest and the, and the court and the judiciary. All those people in that chain needs to be investigated. Right. And without right. being investigated, it's going to be an internal audit mm. that has to be done without missing words. See, this is the way I look at it. That's the only way we can move on. Mm. Because some people have overstayed in that system mm. and they keep on creating more. Mm -hmm. I am sure there are other rented apartments in yeah. other vicinities where we have. Mm -hmm. Like you said, the VIP. What do you mean by VIP? Very important personality. But you are you, you going against the law. Every person should have been treated equally. Equally. Right? Mm. I think we're having it's issues with your audio there. there. Mm. And but I hear you. I, I hear you, Dr. Morgan. I mean, I, I kind of share your sentiments as well. Everyone should be treated um, equally. But I'm going to come to you quickly, um, Evans. Now, in the U.S. or even in the U.K. sometimes, you hear of people serving their time at home. So they have like this ankle monitor bracelets. And, you know, that way the, the law enforcement, the correctional centers, they can always track wherever you are and making sure that you're serving it at home. Is that the case of what's happening here in Nigeria as well? And also, I was going to ask, with the, with the, re the reason why mo maybe most of our correctional centers, could it be just stay with me could it be that the reason why it's not as conducive as it should be is because there are so many people there in the sense that you know for people who they are not even sure they've not been able to go to the to the courts and you know um maybe they're already proving guilty or not guilty all of them end up in the same place and there might just be some petty things that should be able to say okay you know what you can pay a fine for this or it can just be a slap on the wrist but everybody ends up in the same place could it be that the reason why the correctional centers are not really conducive is because of the amount of people and the justice system isn't making sure that they're looking at these cases and relieving themselves of it if maybe for instance that is being done could we now have maybe less people and then it's conducive for them and it could just work and this whole vip thing could we have an alternative whereby they have to serve at home just like the united states of america no no uh, in the, the united states is quite different the penitentiary system in the united states is quite different okay you see it's based on the order made by the court sometimes when when um, a defendant or um, an inmate have contagious disease mm. or a terminal disease that is uh, communicable, okay, mm. um, the court might make so what they call uh, orders and order that the uh, inmate serve his prison term at home in his home, but he will be under house arrest. Yes. You understand? So that he's quarantined to his own environment. Or government might even, you know, take him to a place meant for that purpose and not the prison. Mm. That's on special cases where something very significant um, that uh, should not spread away from the particular person. That is when you have that. Now, even here, judges have the uh, discretion to not make all sentences custodian sentences. There are sentences that should not be custodian. Okay? Community service, you know, yeah. uh, uh, go solve this problem, go do this, go do that. Reduce the amount, the number of people you sentence to serve custodian terms mm. okay most times people who are supposed to do like in bob risky's case for example mm. this is not undermine the judge yeah 
But knowing that our prisons were congested in his own case, the, 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 the penalty had an option of fine. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the penalty for spraying money isn't always that you must go to prison. Mm. But it is the judge's discretion to say, okay, pay the fine and go back. Or go do community service for one month or three months mm. in the court premises. Go wash the toilets and all that mm. for one month. You will supervise. Or alternatively, the penalty is six months imprisonment. Okay? Mm. Six months imprisonment, an option of fine, or whatever it is. So, but what the judge did in uh, his own case was to give the full sentence mm. and made it custodian sentence. Now, you see that the law have options for which that sentence may not have been custodian. But the judge chose to do that. So that is that is the case. So where prisons are congested and where the condition of life there, it have a tendency to destroy an image rather than correct the image. Right. Um, the court the court should held back the custodian sentence mm. and then met out the alternative sentence to ensure that. So. If we follow that, we're going to go along. Because if you look at it, I mean, there is a serious debate now in Nigeria that the federal government said they are tired of feeding inmates, mm. inmates who committed state, state offense, mm. that our prisons are full with inmates that committed state offenses, and the federal government will have to feed them in custody. Mm. So, but if you reduce custodian sentences, I mean, and then you, you will have the prison reduced. Mm. Then another factor is that. If you go to the prison, so many inmates are waiting trial. Right, exactly. That's, many that's of what them, I was saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Many of them, many of them have been granted bail a long time ago. But they are unable to perfect the condition of their bail. Sometimes because the bail conditions are onerous. Mm. When the court says you should go and bring two civil servants that are level 18, Mm. And they must have houses in Ikuvi and VI. Civil servants have houses. <laughs> civil servants have houses in Ikuvi right. and VI. I, I, I mean, civil to, servant, I hear house. you. I hear you. But we have to so, go now. We have to go now. So I want to come to. I want to come to Dr. Martin. Now um, yeah. we're seeing that the minister is probing some of these offices. What is the way forward after this? Not just the probing. How can we ensure that our correctional centers, you know, are being overhauled in every sense of the word? In one minute, please, well, like, we have to go. The one minute, like I said, we have to carry out a very comprehensive audit mm. of both the facilities uh, therein and see what are the deficits we are seeing. Even the, the, the manpower, we have to review them. Mm. And those who are involved in any of this malpractice, they, they send the way out. Yeah. And we change our uh, judicial system, the legal system, and ensure that, like you said, not every sentence is a custodian. Those ones that are good for a uh, fine. You give them the option of fine, and so we decongest the environment. Mm. That is just the way. All that. right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We hope that, you know, our correctional centers, the prison, and like um, Evan said, it's not even just the correctional centers from, you know, the arraignment to the arrest, or rather from the arrest yeah. to the arraignment to, you yeah. know, going yeah. to court. We hope that each of these players, that is the security agencies, the, the judiciary, and of course the correctional centers, we hope that there's going to be a, 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 an overhaul in all of them, ensuring that our correctional centers are better, people are serving the time that they should serve and if there's an alternative it should be given to them as well to decongest the prisons that we have in Nigeria. Gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure discussing this with you. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Have a nice day. All right, we're speaking with Dr. Martin Morgan and Evans Ufeli, and we've just been talking about the Bob Risky story, the fact that the minister has ordered probing into some of the some of the um, some of the suspended um, commissioners right now there. Anyways, we'll, we'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic that talks about youth empowerment, skills development in the digital economy. Please stay with us.